Hello and welcome to Storytime by The Barrier Show. This is a new segment we're introducing to the series. Nothing new to other people's standards. But here we will tell creepy stories, true stories, and just some real stories. Um, with this I would like to branch it off so people can send their own stories in. So I can share your stories for you. Obviously you don't have to tell me your name, nothing like that. Just send it in. But I would say let's begin with... A story called The Man in the Bunny Costume. When I was younger, I used to live by the woods and could see a cemetery from my back porch. One Easter, I remember waking up and seeing the Easter Bunny, one of those terrifying costumes. And what really gets me is I remember smelling the wet hay. When I woke up, I didn't tell anyone, but there was an extra Easter egg in my house that my parents didn't hide. Years when I was in high school, I asked my parents if they ever dressed up like the Easter Bunny and came into a room. They said they would never go through so much trouble. Then my younger sister, who I shared a bunk bed with when this happened, said she remembered when the Easter Bunny came into our room and made a remark about the hay smell. I was terrified we both remembered seeing a person dressed as a bunny in our room. To make it even stranger, I told the friends I sat with at lunch what happened. One of the girls from what was my neighbor across the street. She told me one Easter a long time ago she looked out a window during the night and saw the Easter Bunny standing in a driveway. I had chills. To this day, I am terrified of people in rabbit costumes. Stranger in the house. In college, I would go home every other weekend to work at the job I had since high school. I would drive directly from campus after my last class on Friday to my job. About an hour and a half after my shift was done, I'd go back to my parents' house, which was out in the middle of nowhere. My parents weren't yet home. When I got back from work, they often spent their Fridays and Saturday evenings drinking like they were the ones in college. So the house was dark. Since it was mid-fall, so was the yard. Save for the yard light. I pulled into my normal parking spot, I got out of the car, then turned to open the back of my car and get my backpack from the back seat. That's when I noticed the bathroom light was on. Was that light on when I pulled up? It must have been, right? As I was contemplating the light and reaching for my backpack, there was suddenly a very angry looking old woman standing in the window staring at me. We're not talking resting bitch face here either. She was pissed off at me and I knew it. We stood there staring at each other for a good 10 seconds when my parents pulled into the driveway and distracted me from the stair down with the old woman in the bathroom. By the time I turned my back, the light was still on, but the woman was gone. This is why the basement is locked. My mum was having dinner at a friend's house. It was a small old cottage that has been around for 100 years. She tries to find the bathroom and pulls on the door that is locked. The friend sees and says, sorry, that goes to the basement bathroom is over there. Thinking it is odd, my mother asked, why is the basement door locked? It's always locked. In fact, I don't even have a key for it. The real estate agent advised me not to go down there. There has not been upgraded like the rest of the cottage. It's little more than a root cellar. Fast forward a few weeks when my mother, who works for the police department's community division, is working on a project about the history of the police department in the town. An old man comes in with news clippings about various community events, as well as news clippings from the 50s about a gruesome murder. My mum was a bit taken back. Sorry, I forgot those clippings were in here too. No, I know this address. It's my friend's house. What happened there? Oh, said the old man. Well, that used to be my mother's house. She had been dating this man who was cruel to her, beat her horribly. She tried again and again to break it off of him, but he'd always come back. Finally, my aunt moved in with us, and my mother finally broke up with him. He started getting emotional, then one night he broke in and tied my mother, aunt, sister, and brother up in the basement. He shot them all in front of my mother. Then he shot her and killed himself, leaving a note that she would never leave him again. I was away at college. He started to sob. And that's how my mother's friend learned she had a haunted quadruple murder suicide scene in the basement. She moved out a year later. Well, that is the first segment of Storytime. I hope you guys enjoyed it. 
Um, it's a, it's going to take me a little bit to get used to, so of course I'm going to stuff up a little bit of the words, but I hope you guys enjoyed this little episode. Um, there's, this will be a regular thing now. Um, I just got a microphone recently, which I'm really happy with. It's really good quality. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this segment. As I said, if you have any stories you'd like to send in, please send them my way. If you don't want your name mentioned, no problem. I won't say anything. It's confidential unless you want me to say who you are. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and have a great day. Bye.